I do not like broccoli, and I haven't liked it since I was a little kid. And my mother made me eat it. And I'm president of the United States, and I'm not going to eat any more broccoli. Now. In spite of its well-known health benefits, broccoli is not a popular vegetable. It was derided by President George Bush, and it's pretty much ignored by the rest of us. I'm Michael Moss, and I write about the intersection of food and marketing for the New York Times. I'm trying to answer a question. What would it take to get people to eat better? The advertising firm Victors and Spoils, whose previous clients include Quiznos, General Mills, and Coca-Cola, took on the challenge pro bono. Based in Boulder, Colorado, their team was led by Chief Marketing Officer Andrew Nathan, Lead Strategist Sarah Brito, who would plot the way forward, and Creative Director Chris Seema, who would turn ideas into action. I eat like a four-year-old. In order to grasp the task at hand, they planned a day where we were immersed in all things broccoli. First stop, Isabel Farms in Lafayette, Colorado. Broccoli's a nice crop with a nice big head. And the other thing that we've started selling a little bit is broccoli greens. It's just another way to sort of cook in that same way, but be a little different and not have kale <laughs> every night. At the end of our visit, Andy Nathan asked the farmer for one word to describe broccoli. I just say healthy. Our second stop was Hugo Matheson's Bistro, The Kitchen, in downtown Boulder, where Hugo and his chefs spoke about taste and presentation. The fish and the meat counter, there'd be like a line of broccoli pushed in between to divide the meat. So it's just broccoli, I think, is what the problem of this whole thing is. Like you said, it's like, it's the divider in the meat aisle. It's like, we don't even, it's, it's the larger version of parsley. Culturally, and then like from a food perspective, like, Broccoli needs to take center stage. So many of the words that have been coming up as we've been talking to people, broccoli seems like it's this humble, modest vegetable. The reason it's so good here is because it's it's core to these dishes. I mean, you made it part of it, you celebrated it. Where I think, especially in America, I think it's like, eat your broccoli, then you can do something awesome, you know? <laughs> and I think we have to change that, like broccoli, can be the awesome, and I think that's what we need to struggle with a little bit. After the kitchen, we cross town to Creekside Elementary School, which has a small fruit and vegetable garden where students get hands-on experience. But if you develop that relationship for them, that experience, and let them make their own decision, you know, then they've got a great, great likelihood of trying and eating it. Just one word to describe broccoli, what would it be? Bitter. It's not like popping a cherry tomato in your, in your, in your mouth here. Yeah. We ate broccoli burgers and a broccoli-infused brownie for lunch and listened to chef and author Ann Cooper talk about her own efforts to get children to eat better. High school kids that have had nothing but highly processed, high-fat, high-sugar, high-salt food, and all of a sudden I come in and want to serve them broccoli, for instance, I mean, like, how am I going to succeed at that? If they don't have broccoli at home, or if 100% of their experience with broccoli is this brown, squishy, weird, smelly <laughs> So then what do you do? One of the great ways to get kids to eat more fresh fruits and vegetables is salad bars. So we do tastings, we do Iron Chef competitions, we do chef demos, we have the salad bars. It's about choice. What's one word that comes to mind when you think of broccoli? Cute. I do think it's a cute Vegetable. I don't know what you said before about brown, squishy, smelly. <laughs> that's what's going to stick it. <laughs> you said that twice. <laughs> After lunch, we return to the offices of Victors and Spoils for another round of broccoli. In the conference room, lead strategist Sarah Brito gave marching orders to the creative team. So our key consumer insight that we're working with is that everyone is currently talking about kale. Um, it is everywhere. This is Bon Appetit magazine. There's a whole section on the vegetable revolution in here, and there's a timeline around when all of these vegetables had their it moments. Broccoli is not on this list. There's nothing new or exciting to say about broccoli. Part of our challenge is going to be how to change the visual communication, the visual style of broccoli in culture. That wall over there says broccoli isn't exactly that cool. But maybe there's something cool of not being cool. Like you don't want to dupe anyone, but maybe, you know, maybe they're in on the joke. I mean, the fact that broccoli is having its own campaign, I think you could have a lot of fun with. The idea of like, you know, broccoli bouquets. So you're basically saying like, I'd like you to live longer. Here's something that's going to do that. So in essence, broccoli is probably a better gift than flowers. Is it a brocade? Oh! oh <laughs> 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 <laughs>
A month later, the team gathered in the offices of Bolt House Farms, where they pitched broccoli to Chief Marketing Officer Todd Putnam. Todd is a former vice president at Coke, and he's using what he learned there to sell produce. We wrote the brief for the campaign together, and now he would decide whether or not Victors and Spoils had what it takes to sell. We want to steal kale from them. I mean, and, and now seems like a really great time to do that, so let's pick a fight with kale. When we talk about the, the tone, we can play with this a little bit. It's kind of a combination of the old like 1920s yeah. fight poster and yeah, like yeah. kind of the political things. And that seemed like a really nice, strong tone. Those kill guys are going to be pissed. Yeah. <laughs> But the nice thing about it, it's like by picking a fight with Kale, you're going to get Kale Passionistas coming out. It's like the, the, the Pepsi Coach like warfare from like the 80s. I get it. I mean, I think this is a brilliant idea to get us into the, into yeah. the conversation. But then I, I also need to have a little of my broccoli. This is the palate cleanser. This I got it. Okay. Yeah. This is the alpha vegetable. It feels like the steak industry ad. Yeah. Right. What's yeah. The, it's what's, what's for dinner, it? right? What's for dinner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We want to be places that are really unexpected, that are alpha sized. So, I mean, there's no reason that we can't have a NASCAR presence. We know ultra running is really big up in the mountains. I didn't even know you could grill broccoli until this project. I was kind of blown away. I, and, I mean, yeah. and it's good. So let's get him to grill broccoli over a volcano. You know, <laughs> we'll work with Red Bull's activation team. <laughs> it is so awesome to have both a strategy conversation and then a creative conversation. And the two things not only link, but they work with each other so unbelievably well. The breadth of work and the creativity is fantastic. If we were in real world, we would buy. We would have bought off of this. So you're getting in the broccoli business? <laughs> totally. Totally. Although this campaign was fictional, it's a reflection of a sea change in produce marketing and a blueprint, perhaps, for a way forward. There's a challenge in the creativity of all, but it was a chance for everybody to kind of give back a little bit. This is actually something that can make the world a better place. And I think creatives would gravitate to that too. I'm cut to the chase and start talking about how we're going to divide up all this great stuff. I want that t-shirt. Oh, I'm up on